is us. Singular. So the students have answer to the question. Now the third example here, we know where the problem lies. The performer of the action here, the subject is we. That's the subject. And we apparently is plural. So the need for a plural verb as well, which is no and not knows. We know where the problem lies. Now that's the second rule of Concord. Now, the first and the second rule are more like opposites. Now, let's move on to the third rule. Yes, the third rule, when two or more subjects are coordinated, or joined by end, the plural form of the verb is required. When two or more subjects are coordinated or joined by end, the plural form of the verb is required. We're simply saying that when we have two subjects, and these two subjects are joined by the conjunction end, we use the plural verb. Two subjects joined by the conjunction and requires a plural verb. Example, the man and his wife have done well. Now we have two subjects here. The man and the other subject is wife. Because they are both performing the same action here. Now they are joined together by the conjunction and. Hence the need for a plural verb which is have. Another example. Mrs. Stephanie and her daughter look alike. Mrs. Stephanie and her daughter look alike. The two subjects we have here, Mrs. Stephanie then the other subject, a daughter. Now, those two subjects are joined together by the conjunction and. And therefore, we have to use the verb that is the plural form, look, not looks. Look. The coach and the referee know their honors. The coach and the referee know their honors. The first one, the coach, and the second subject, the referee. Now, because we have two subjects joined by the conjunction and, we use the plural verb, which is no, not knows. Now, that takes us to the next rule, rule four. But before we go to rule four, there's an exception to rule three. Now, there are cases where two subjects refer to the same entity. That is, those two subjects are making reference to the same person. 
When two subjects are making reference to the same entity, we use a singular verb. For instance, my father and mentor has traveled to Germany. My father and mentor. Now, if you look at the sentence, we have this, my father, mentor. But in this case, we are not referring to two different persons. I am only telling you in this kind of example that this person who is my father is also my mentor. So I'm referring to the same person as my father and to the same person as my mentor. Now, because those two subjects are referring to only one entity, we are going to use the verb as, not have. Now, let me give us another example there. The slim and tall lady is my friend. The slim and tall lady is my friend. The slim lady, the tall lady. However, the slim and the tall lady is referring to the same person. I am only telling you that this same person who is slim and this same lady who is the tall lady, the same person. So I use the, ver the, the singular verb is, not are. The slim and tall lady is my friend now let's move on to rule four now rule four a singular subject followed by with like as well as in addition to no less than together with, along with, takes a singular subject. Now, get this very correctly. The subject here is a singular subject. But then, whenever the singular subject is followed by any of these words, with, like, as well as, in addition to, no less than, together with, along with, they are usually followed by a singular verb. For instance, the coach along with the players. The coach along with the players. Now, the coach. Because we have used along with here it has to be followed by a singular subject so we say the coach along with the players has lost the match this wouldn't be have are we there now another example the manager as well as his secretary is expected the manager now note that the manager a singular subject now i'm using it i'm using this immediately after it as well as his secretary. But because this is a singular subject already, and it is followed by this, then we are going to use a singular verb. So the manager as well as the secretary is expected. At the party. 
the manager as well as the secretary is expected at the party. Now let's look at two more examples in this case before we move on to the fifth rule. My car in addition to the house was auctioned. My car, in addition to the house, was auctioned. Now, the subject here, the first subject here is a singular subject, my car. Now, because we have used in addition to, it will be followed by a singular Subject, a singular verb rather, was. So my car in addition to the house was unctioned, not were unctioned. Because we have used in addition to. Now let's look at one more example before we move on to rule five. Mr. Kenny together with his friends is around. Mr. Kenny together with his friend. The first subject here, Mr. Kenny. Now, Mr. Kenny here being singular and followed by together with. Then the, the, the verb has to be a singular subject, a singular verb. Is around, not uh, around. So please take note of those words and ensure that whenever you use them, after a singular subject, that subject should be followed by a singular verb. Now let's move on to rule five. Two or more singular subjects joined by or, nor, or but requires the singular form of the verb. Two or more singular subjects joined by or, nor, or but requires the singular form of the verb. Not those three conjunctions, or, no, and, but. Now let's look at some examples. Uncle Jude or his wife is good enough to lead the team. Uncle Jude or his wife is good enough to lead the team. Now, this is a singular subject, Uncle Jude. Join together with this, with the, with the conjunction or. Therefore, it has to take a singular verb, is, not are. Another example. Neither the man nor his wife nor his son. Neither the man nor his son has not have. Ask the wherewithal to undo the task. Now, because we are using the, the conjunction no. This is the first um, subject. And this is another subject. Singular subject, 
singular subject. So it has to be followed by a singular verb. So we use as, not have. Neither the man nor his son has the wherewithal to handle the task. Let's look at one more example with but. Not the landlord, but my brother owns the car. Two singular subjects. The landlord, my brother. Now, these two singular subjects joined together by the conjunction but will take a singular verb, owns. Neither the, not the landlord, but my brother owns the car. Now, that is rule five. Let's move on to the exception to rule five. Remember that the rule says that when two singular subjects are joined, remember two singular subjects. Now, the exception to this is that when one of those subjects is in the plural form. Then there is something we apply. We call it the law of proximity. Now, for you to remember what this is, just remember proximity, nearness. Now, what does this entail? When one of those subjects is the plural form. You have to now consider the subject that is closest to the verb. It is the subject that is closest to the verb that determines the verb that will be used in such case. Example, the teacher or the students. Now look at this. This is a singular subject. This, on the other hand, is a plural subject, students. Now this, obviously, is closer to the verb. So whatever is here is what would determine the verb that we are going to use. Now because this is a plural subject, then we use a plural verb. So we say the teacher or the students are guilty. Assume that there is an interchange and now we have the students first. Or the teacher. Now here we have the plural subject and here we have the singular subject. Then this will change. It will no longer be her. Then it becomes is guilty. Because the verb that is closer to the subject, because the subject that is closer to the verb, rather, is singular. So this is what we mean by the law of proximity, which is an exception to rule five. So when you have one of the subjects as plural, then the subject that is closer to the verb determines the verb that will be used. Now let's move on to rule six. When the adjectival noun phrase is placed in the subject position, a plural verb should be used. When the adjectival noun phrase is placed in the subject position, a plural verb should be used. I remember we have talked about noun phrases, and if you have not, um, if you were not part of that class, you can go back to that video on our site learnathomenigeria.com so you can get that um lesson on noun phrases there now when an adjectival noun phrase is used in the subject position a plural verb should 
be used. Now, let me give you examples here. The poor. Poor ordinarily is an adjective. But using the poor together makes this a noun phrase. So that's what we refer to as adjective noun phrase. Now, phrases like these are usually followed by plural verbs. So it is wrong for you to say the poor is subjected to servitude. Rather, we say the poor are subjected to servitude. The poor are subjected to servitude. Now, let's look at another example there. The sick seek help from the doctors. The sick seek help from the doctors. This is another adjective and noun phrase. But then, because this is an adjective and noun phrase, it will be followed by a plural, a plural verb. So, it won't be the six. It won't be the six, six. No. The seek, seek help from the doctors. Now, let's move on to the next rule. Rule seven. Some nouns have plural forms, but actually they are singular in meaning. And because they are singular in meaning, they require the singular form of the verb. Examples of such nouns are news, measles, politics, dynamics, mathematics. Now, those nouns and other examples, Caesars, now all of these nouns when you look at their form, they have a plural form. Why? Because they are already having S added to them. News. There's nothing like N-E-W, new, no. That would be a different word entirely. Measles. Politics. Caesars. Mathematics. Now, though they appear with a plural form, having S with them, in meaning they are singular. They refer to one thing. Therefore, they, are, they require a singular form of the verb. So an example here, you don't say politics are played by everybody in Nigeria. No. Politics is played by everybody in Nigeria. So the noun, politics, which is the subject here, is actually a singular form, not a plural form. So it must take a singular verb, not a plural verb. Measles has been very rampant in the country. Now, measles here looks like a plural form, but actually it is a singular form, the subject. So it has to take a singular verb, as. Measles, as, not measles, have. Now, let's move on to rule eight. This is the rule that has to do with indefinite articles or indefinite pronouns. Now, indefinite pronouns include everybody, somebody, nobody, someone, each, anybody, no one, anyone, none, every, and so on. Now, all those are called indefinite articles because 
They don't actually refer to somebody definitely. Now, indefinite articles are singular words and therefore must take singular verbs. They must take singular verbs. So, an example here, everybody has a role to play. Everybody has a role to play for Nigeria to be better. Everybody has a role to play for Nigeria to be better. Everybody here, being an indefinite pronoun, is singular, so must take a singular verb. Another example of that in rule eight, everything seems to be in top shape today. Everything seems to be in top shape today. Okay, everything, indefinite article, which is our subject, takes the singular verb, seems, not seem. Everything seems to be in top shape today. One more example there. Someone is ready to give it all it takes to succeed. Someone is ready to give it all it takes to succeed. Someone, an indefinite article being our subject, takes the verb is, which is a singular verb. Someone is ready, not someone already. Someone is ready. Now we move on to the rule nine. Two singular nouns connected by and, which are preceded by each or every, should be used with a singular verb. Two singular nouns connected by and, which are preceded by each or every, should be used with a singular verb. Example. Every man and woman is useful to the society in one way or the other. Now, let me remind us of something that we discussed in the, in the previous rule. I remember telling you in rule three that when two um, singular verbs, two singular subjects are joined by and, that they are usually followed by plural verb. Now, look at this case here. Whenever each or every comes before those two singular subjects, it is no longer going to be plural. It becomes singular. Why? Because we have introduced something indefinite, which is every. So, for instance, if I say a man and a woman, then it will become are useful to the society. But the moment I bring it to every man and woman, then the, the, the verb changes to a singular verb, is. So every man and woman is useful to the society in one way or the other.
Another example there, every boy and girl shows sympathy to the old woman. Now, because I have used every here, then this verb has to be singular. Even though we have two subjects joined by and, the use of every here automatically changes this verb to the singular verb. And the same thing happens here. Because I have used every here, then we have to use a singular verb. Even though we have two Subject joined together by and. So let's take note of that. And the same thing goes for each. Example, each boy and girl in my class performs excellently. Each boy and girl in my class performs excellently. Because we have used each here, then this has to be a singular verb. Despite the use of and to join the two subjects. And finally, let's move on to the last rule for today. And that is rule 10. Now, each of and one of should be used with a plural noun and a singular verb. Each of and one of should be used with a plural noun and a singular verb. Now, whenever you use each of and or one of, always ensure that what follows when it comes to the subject is a plural noun. However, the verb has to be a singular verb. Example, each of the students, not each of the students, each of the students has, not have, a plural noun, a singular verb. So each of the students has a mobile phone. So take note of that. Whenever you use each of, then you have a plural noun and a singular verb. Another example there. One of them knows your place of birth. One of, because we have used one of, then it has to be followed by a plural subject. So this should be plural. However, this will be singular. The verb will be singular. So one of them knows your place of birth. Now, those are the 10 rules that we'll be looking at today. Quickly, I'll go over each of these rules, one after the other, for the sake of those that came late. Number one, I said, when you have a singular subject, let it be followed by a singular verb. Number two, a plural subject should be followed by a plural verb. Number three, two or more subjects that are joined by end they take the plural form of the verb. 
And we said an exception is that when such a um, verb refers to only one entity, that is, those two subjects, they refer to the same person, then we still use a singular verb. And rule four, when a singular subject is followed by with, like, as well as, in addition to, no less than, together with, along with, they usually take a singular verb. And number five, when two or more singular subjects are joined by or, nor, or both, they require singular form of the verb. That is when they are two singular subjects. Now, an exception is when one of those subjects is plural. And this is where we then apply what we refer to as the law of proximity. That is, the subject that is nearer to the verb determines the verb that we are going to use. So when the subject nearer to the verb is plural, then the verb has to be plural. Whereas when such subject is singular, then the verb will be singular. And rule six, when the adjectival noun phrase is placed in the subject position, a plural verb should be used. Rule seven, nouns that are singular in meaning, but take the form of plural by adding s, they usually take the singular verb. And number eight, indefinite pronouns, they usually take on singular verbs. And number nine, two singular nouns connected by and and are preceded by each or every, they usually take the singular verb. And finally, number 10, each of and one of should be used with plural noun and singular verb. Thank you for listening. We have come to the end of today's lesson, but then we are going for break and we'll come back for our question and answer session. I hope you are sending your questions to the platform. We'll be here to answer them all. So enjoy your short break. I'll be right back. Thank you. Hello, in town.
Okay, welcome back from that break. We have some, um, we have very few questions to attend to. Ola Dipo John, I don't understand rule nine. Okay, Ola Dipo John, let me just quickly go over rule nine again for your sake. Now, rule nine, when you have two singular nouns, and these two singular nouns are joined together by the conjunction and. But before those two singular nouns, we have either each or every. Then you have to use a singular verb. Now I was trying to differentiate two things here. Now every man and woman is useful to the society. Look at this. Now, let's stop here and look at this other one. Here, I used the verb is. And here, I used the verb are. Now, what makes the difference? Because here, we have an indefinite, which is every. Now, because we have used every here, then this becomes a singular verb. So, every man and woman is useful, not are useful. But in this case where there is no every, a man and a woman, they are just joined together by and. Then we are just going to use our plural verb, are useful. I hope that clarifies that. Then um, somebody else asked for rule six. Let's go back to rule six. Rule six. When the adjective and noun phrase is placed in the subject position, a plural verb should be used. Now, here you have to understand adjectives, rich, poor, and so on. Now, noun phrases, we have talked about noun phrases on this platform before. So if you understand noun phrases, you know they are words that have nouns as their head word. So when an adjective and noun phrase is used in the subject position, it is usually followed by a plural verb. So you say, the poor are not the poor is subjected to servitude. And I hope that clarifies that. Then Oreolua, why is this sentence correct? The man, unlike the woman, is here tonight. Okay, now let me go back to that rule and show it to you. Okay, in rule four, when you have two singular subjects followed by with, like, as well as in addition to, that like also can be unlike, okay? Like can also be unlike. So when you have all of those, and they are two singular subjects, they usually take a singular verb. So that is applicable in rule four, or Lua. I hope that answers your question. Okay. Let's go on to our assessment questions. Ola Dipo John, I should come again with number nine. Wow. Okay, let me take it one more time. Number nine. Two singular nouns connected by and. 
and are preceded by each or every should be used with a singular verb. The two nouns, they are singular. The two subjects, they are singular. Are we there? Now, these two singular subjects, every or each, whenever it comes before them, then it will take a singular, so a singular verb. And I just gave you an example. Every boy and girl shows sympathy to the old. Now, this is a singular, a singular subject. Singular, singular. But these singular subjects are preceded by every. And every is indefinite. Remember that when we talked about indefinite pronouns, we said they are usually followed by singular verbs. And that is why this has to be shows. A singular verb, not show. But if this every is not here and we just say a boy and a girl then this will be show it will be plural in that case why because there is no every here but because of this indefinite every then it has to be followed by shows which is a singular verb <coughs> excuse me Okay, Abe, which is used? Okay, my question isn't really about today's topic. I just need clarification about the rule of using each other and one another. I know one of them is meant to be used for two people while the other is for two or more, but I've forgotten which is for which. Okay, very simple. Each other for two people one another for more than two people. The couple love each other. That is two people. The crew love one another. It means the crew have more than two people. So they love one another. And we refer to them as reciprocal pronouns. Reciprocal pronouns. Yeah. And why do we call those reciprocal pronouns? Simply because it has to do with reciprocation. That is, what I do to you, you also do to me. So we only use them when two people or more than two people are reciprocating the same thing. So the couple love each other. It means... The husband loves the wife, and the wife, in turn, loves the husband. The crew loves one another. It means all the members of the crew have love for one another. They reciprocate. So we call them reciprocal pronouns. So each other for two people, one another for more than two people. Abe, I hope that answers your question. Abe. Still on rule six, is it correct to say the man seek help from the doctor? Okay, let me correct one thing first. You don't use full stop and question mark together. Okay, so take note of that. Now, the man seek help from the doctor. The man is just a noun phrase. It is not an adjective noun phrase. Because man is a noun. Now, note the difference. This word poor is an adjective. So it can be poor, poorer, poorest. So that is why this is referred to as adjective noun phrase. But in this case, this is not an adjective noun phrase. This word M-A-N is a noun. 
So this is just simply a noun phrase. So it cannot be seek help because this is singular. So it will be the man seeks help because this is not an adjective or noun phrase. This is just simply a noun phrase because there is nothing like man, manner, manest. It is just simply man. We only have poor, poorer, poorest. I hope you get that. So please, note that this has to be six, not seek. We only use um, sing singular, we use plural here because this is an adjective now phrase. I hope you understand that very clearly. Okay. Thank you for your questions, and I hope I have been able to do justice to your questions. So let's move on to our own assessment questions for today. Now, the assessment questions will be displayed on the board. There are five of them. So I want you to give me the five answers at once. Don't type one after the other. The first person to send in the five answers at once correctly. Type in the five answers at once and send them in. I'll be waiting for you. I hope we are attempt attempting the questions. So send in your answers one to five at once. I'm waiting. Some people are just sending in two answers, one answer. I said answer the five at once and send in your answers. The five at once. Jim Arukayat, you only sent in two answers. Abdul Salam, you sent only four answers. Okay, Joseph, you sent, Josephine, okay, you sent in the five answers. Abe, you sent in four answers. Okay, five. Abe also sent in five answers. Okay, now let's look at the answers to each of those with explanations. Number one, neither Bola nor a friend 
is or are responsible? Okay, now the answer to that is is. And that is because Bola, a friend, are two singular subjects. And two singular subjects joined together with no, we usually take a singular verb. So the answer, neither Bola nor a friend is responsible. Rafa, together with his friends, are or is admitted. Yes. When we use together with, with a singular subject, we said it should take a singular verb. So our answer is still is. Raphael, together with his friends, is admitted. None of those compensated was or were happy. None is an indefinite pronoun. So because of that indefinite pronoun none, followed by a plural subject, those, then I told you that it will then be followed by a singular verb, was. That should be rule 10 or rule 9 thereabout. So there will be none of those compensated, was happy. The man or his boys need or needs help. Now, the man is a singular subject, separated with, um, joined together with his boys with the uh, conjunction or. But noting that the man is a singular subject, then we take the singular verb needs. The man or his boys needs help. The short woman and principal of my school is or are tough. The short woman is still the same person. That is the principle of my school. So our answer there is, is. And that's it. Now let's take the next assessment question. Number one to five. Rewrite the following sentences to remove any error that you can find there. So just rewrite the five sentences. I'll be waiting for you. Okay, let me quickly give the answer to that so that we can end the session for today. Every boy or girl who registers, remember that when you use or for two singular nouns, then it has to be a singular verb. So every boy or girl who registers as a student is entitled, not are entitled, to an examination. So that's it. Now, let's go back to the previous slide. That's um, the fourth question. The man or his boys? Josephine, you didn't get that right. Abe, you didn't get that right too. Remember, I explained to you the rule of proximity when we discussed, I think, rule five. The man or his boys? Now, in this case, his boys is plural. And so it will be what would determine the verb that we will use. So it will be the man or his boys need help, not needs help. So please, Josephine and Abdusalam, even Abe, take note of that. 
So that's it for today. We come to the end of our life class. Mm -hmm.